Hey, what's going on people? Today we're gonna have a look at AMD's Phenom 2X6 1090T processor from 2010. I've been wanting to make this video for a very long time. In fact, I had the CPU laying inside my desk for around a year or so, which I haven't even tested until only a couple of weeks ago. Thankfully, it works just fine and I even managed to get a decent overclock out of it. I never owned a Phenom 2 CPU myself, yet I always wanted to get my hands on one and also compare it to my FX8350, especially since FX CPUs didn't receive as much praise as Phenom 2 did. Now, in today's video, we're only going to focus on the Phenom processor, though I promise that in my next upload, we're definitely going to have an in-depth look at how these CPUs stack up compared to each other. We're going to be looking at how they perform in stock, clock for clock and overclocked configurations. So if you're not subscribed yet, be sure to do so and turn on the notifications cause you don't wanna miss it. For the system specs, we have the Phenom 2 X6 1090T overclocked to 4.08 GHz using 1.55 volts cooled by a Zalman CNPS 14X cooler with the Northbridge and Hyper Transport set to 2550 MHz, a GB 990FXA UD3 Revision 4 motherboard, 8GB of DDR3 memory clocked at 1700 MHz, an MSI GTX 970 with an overclock of 125 MHz on both core and memory clocks, and of course, a 700W FSP Hydro power supply. In case you're wondering why I have such weird numbers is because I could only play around with the base clock and the memory multiplier since modifying anything else would completely break the overclock for some reason. Now the RAM can be pushed up to 2000 MHz with this Phenom processor before getting unstable, but the thing is the next memory multiplier would set the RAM 40 MHz above that limit with the base clock setting that I had, which is why I couldn't push the memory clocks any further. I had the option to drop the base clock down to 250 MHz and set the DRAM frequency to exactly 2000 MHz, though since the CPU and the Northbridge clocks also dropped, I decided that it was not worth the trade-off. Still though, I believe that it's a pretty good overclock and I don't think that pushing things any further would make a huge difference at this point. By the way, the CPU was running very cool despite the high voltage of 1.55 volts, topping out only at 61 degrees Celsius using Intel burn test. Also, while we're mainly going to focus at overclocking performance, I will still include a few stock results as well. Alright, let's jump right into it and starting off we have Cinebench R15. Here we're getting 105 points for the single core and 609 points for the multi-core, which is an increase of 15 and 27% respectively over stock settings. Next up we have Blender's BMW Benchmark that the overclocked Phenom managed to render in 16 minutes and 27 seconds, 21% faster compared to stock. Using the classroom scene, we got the same percentage increase over stock, finishing the render in 58 minutes and 20 seconds. Next, we have Corona, which I wanted to use to test the CPU, but unfortunately our Phenom processor doesn't have the necessary instructions to be able to run it. While we're at it, Apex Legends also seems to have the same issue, which really sucks in my opinion, because if we had these instructions, we would definitely be able to run the game without a problem. I guess let's begin with PUBG then, which our Phenom processor handled just fine. The frame rate would mostly range from around 70 to 100 FPS depending on the area, though unfortunately there were a few locations such as Yasna Palana where the 6 core Phenom would struggle, dropping as low as 40 frames per second, but other than that, the game was pretty playable. Also, please do keep in mind that since the GTX 970 is not a very powerful graphics card, all the games were tested using lowest settings at a resolution of 1600 by 900 to reduce any GPU bottlenecks.
Next up, we have Watch Dogs 2, which is a very CP-intensive title because of which overclocking the system made a huge difference. Here we can see that not only we're getting a 10 to 15 FPS increase over stock, but also slightly more consistent frame times, making the game much more playable. Next on the list is The Division, and using the built-in benchmark, our Phenom processor managed to stay well above 120 FPS most of the time. Moving on we have The Witcher 3, which also ran on our Phenom CPU without a problem, with the frame rate ranging from 60 to 120 FPS depending on the location. Next, we have Need for Speed 2015, and while I definitely saw better frame times, the game was still playable and I rarely saw dips below 60 frames per second. Next up we have GTA 5, and here we can see how much of an impact overclocking has made, helping our Phenom processor stay above 60 FPS most of the time. And finally we have Battlefield 5, and man I didn't see this coming. The 10 year old 6 core Phenom 2 processor overclocked to 4.1 GHz is able to run Battlefield 5 at a playable frame rate. Now obviously this is only applicable to smaller maps with 32 players, and even though it wasn't a very smooth experience by any means, the system was still able to run the game just fine. I'm gonna be honest with you, I did not expect the 6 core Phenom processor to perform this good. Now yes, performance wasn't outstanding, especially in some of the latest titles, and it does suck that it lacks a few crucial instructions, yet I believe we can all agree that it is just crazy how usable the CPU is even after all these years. Keep in mind that this is by far not the maximum overclock that one can achieve, so if you got liquid with your chip and can overclock your north bridge as well as the RAM the proper way, you should be able to push your overclocks a little bit further and get even better performance. Another great idea is to just simply upgrade to a first or second generation Ryzen system, especially since they're dirt cheap nowadays, so if you're interested and also would like to indirectly support my work, you can do so by using Amazon affiliate links provided in the description. 
Are you still using a Phenom 2 CPU? Let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways, that's been it. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to check out more videos on my channel. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see y'all in the next one.